I studied neuroscience at university, 1995 to 1998. Still to this day, can't quite fathom why I chose to study that because I've been really into computers before, you know, had computers since I was younger. I chose not to do computing. I chose to do neuroscience, which was a real push for me. It was really tough, a really difficult course. I didn't do so great on it. I think one of my professors saw something in me anyway and tried to push me forward to do a PhD at that point. Not for me. I didn't get a great grade, but it clearly stuck with me because it's one of the things that I touch upon throughout my career is that neuroscience course. At the time, it didn't feel right. Looking back on it, it did. My learning from that is I was bold and I pushed myself forward. From that, similarly, I didn't want to work in neuroscience. I didn't know what else to do. I retrained as a teacher. I thought I'd go and see a bit of the world and do it as a teacher. So I did. And now I'm an introvert at heart. You may not believe that from this video, but really I am. I don't like to be at the front in terms of the crowd. You'll find me in gatherings at the back with maybe one or two people having a great in-depth, in intimate chat. It's a push for me to get on the stage. It's a push for me to do this. But what I've learned from my past and what I learned from teaching is that you, you have to put yourself out there. It's something you need to do as a human. You need to be out there. And I learned that the very first day I was teaching children. I taught children, mostly under 10s. The very first day I went in expecting of my teaching career, when I had my first job, I went expecting one class of seven, eight-year-olds. I ended up with a class of 14 and 15-year-olds. Wow. I'd not prepared anything in terms of the right material. I'd not really taught teenagers before. It was a scary experience for me, but I survived. Part of the reason I'm known as Mr. Joe now is a hark back to my teaching experience, really. It was really something that stayed with me. Being put into difficult circumstances, not through my own choice. I mean, certainly I chose that career, don't get me wrong, but because I was working with children and children are wonderfully and utterly unpredictable all of the time. You cannot control kids. You cannot expect there to be a level of control in terms of what you do with children. There'll always be the unexpected. And it taught me in terms of teaching to give up that level of control. I can't have control, right? Control is something that's nebulous. We all want, but it's almost impossible to get. And actually, it can be, feel quite comfortable to be in that place of no control. I went from teaching. I went back to university again. I studied at the University of, of, of Bath. I studied human um, communication and computing. So amalgamation of psychology and computer science, the two of them together, to create my next career, which was user experience, how people use technology to communicate with each other and how technology gets in the way of simple human interaction. Wonderful career for me. Um, I went from that into then the world of work around that. And I was lucky enough to meet uh, fairly early on in my career, be introduced to the folks at Marriott Hotels. Um, and they presented a really interesting problem, which was their success rate in the UK was, was about half their US success rate, right? They were losing millions every day or every year because they couldn't get the UK site to be successful. I took one look at it. It was obvious, right? The website was pictures of red buses, policemen in policemen helmets, post boxes, black cabs. It was stereotypically what an international person might think the UK audience are and what they would want. Of course, it was not right. I did some very simple user research, proved it wrong, proved what we had to do and got some incredible success for early on, you know, with sort of hundreds of thousands of pounds of extra success that first year. And that taught me an important lesson, right? That I don't have the answers, that I have an instinct when something's wrong, but I don't have the answers about making it right. I'm not attached to a truth in that situation. And the research opened my eyes to that being unattached from being right and being unattached from what the right thing is to do, but having the means, the processes, the approach to uncover what that organization, that business, that individual needs to do. And again, that stayed with me in my coaching now. I can tell my clients what to do. I give them the processes to help them find the right thing to do for themselves. A real eye opener, that experience. And it also showed me at the levels that I could operate. So that UK experience then led to doing the same thing in um, the Middle East, in Arabic speaking countries, in Russia in China, in Japan. Marriott pointed me and my team at the right at these international sites and we went and we fixed them. And we had millions and millions of dollars of extra success. I mean, if I think about the Arabic website for number one, it was an extra 20 million that first year. I mean, incredible amounts of success. I took that same experience then to the likes of the UK train ticketing system, train line, Disney, eBay, and I had wonderful success doing exactly the same thing, right? helping people uncover truth. And I was never scared of doing that, uncovering truth, holding a mirror up to that organization to say, hey, this is you. You need to do something about this because your customers don't like it. What can we do? And again, that stayed with me.